Okay, folks, Paul Chamberlain coming to you today for my weekly vlog. And today, we are going to be covering what you should expect when you go to pick up your camper. What kind of a walkthrough should you receive? Now, for more information on anything that I cover, if there's something in specific that maybe I didn't cover very clear, just shoot me a comment. If there is something that you would like me to cover, a particular topic, something maybe the, you know you have questions on, by all means, shoot me a comment or an email. All my information will be down below. I appreciate everybody watching, and this is done totally unscripted, and I do not have a teleprompter. So uh, sometimes I might misspeak, but I will try to correct that by putting information down below, or you might even see something coming up on the, the screen here uh, to correct something I may have said incorrectly. So let's start with the day that you show up to pick up your camper. And this would be pretty much uh, universal regardless, regardless of whether you, you know, you're, you're picking up a, a towable or a drivable. Uh, I realize pop-ups are going to have a couple other things. And by the way, I plan on doing uh, walkthroughs on different campers this season, so do stay tuned and uh, I'll be putting those up. And appreciate thumbs up if you're liking what you're hearing here. And uh, like I say, stay tuned and please subscribe to my channel to keep up to date. So let's start with the day you pick up your camper. Typically what happens, and I'm gonna be telling you from what the way I do it, um, and basically what you should accept, you should be expecting the same type of uh, uh, information being given to you as well. And I know a lot of times I get people that this may be their fourth or fifth camper and I still go through these this process with them because I can't tell you how many times that maybe they were misinformed or maybe there was a change in the RV industry. Imagine that, actually having changes. But anyway, so the day you'd come in and let's just, for this case, let's just say it's a travel trailer. You're coming in and you're picking it up. Basically what we do is the day you come in, I take your uh, vehicle keys, I'm giving that to my service department. They are gonna be going ahead and taking care of the hitch work if need be. And we're gonna go on out and we're gonna start on the off door side. Now the slides will be closed at this time. Um, typically I'll have it plugged in already and we're gonna to talk to you about when you get to the campground, what you're supposed to do. And basically what I'm telling you is first of all, you wanna level it side to side. Now I know folks, some of you may have the automatic leveling system, so you may not have to go through this process, but you still may have to go through some of it uh, if you have an automatic leveling system and the tires come off the ground. So keep that in mind. So what I'm telling folks is, first of all, to level side to side, you need to run the tires over something. Now, whether you're buying the building blocks or something I recommend you get is get yourself some 2x12s. Cut them in a um, like a six foot section and a four foot section and that should be pretty much enough for you to level side to side if you ever need it. When you do that you want to buy um, pressure treated lumber and you want to have the ends uh, beveled to make it easier when you um, roll up onto that wood. The reason why I say the 2 by 12 I know that's wider than the tires but that gives you some room for air. Um, so that's the first thing you level side to side. Next, what you're going to do is then when you disconnect from your vehicle, that's where you're going to level front to back. All right, so before you go ahead and disconnect your vehicle or the tow, your travel trailer or RV from your tow vehicle, one thing you want to do, folks, is chalk your tires. This will keep it from rolling in the event that you're uh, on slight a hill or something along those lines. The type of chalks that I recommend if, in fact, you have two or more axles are the X chalks. And what that is, that's something that, and it goes in between the tires and it has a ratchet and it ratches out against the tires. Folks, do not over um, extend those. You don't want to break the steel belts in your tire. You want to have them snug, but keep in mind one thing. When you put any chalks on your tires, after you've been towing, your tires are hot and they will cool down and then when they're hot they expand they cool they're going to contract a little bit so you're going to have to reposition your chalks in the event um, well once you have it, it cools down so you know later that evening or the next day um, 
if in fact you put your chalks on your tires properly folks you will have less movement of your unit regardless of whether it's a travel trailer whether it's a fifth wheel of course if you have a drivable you have a parking brake so you shouldn't have an issue there uh, single wheel trailers what I tell you to do is of course get yourself uh, you know those plastic chalks or something along those lines and what you want to do is before you disconnect you want to back up hard against those chalks and then put the one in the front that way there it's not going to roll down as much and you will have a better a more stable uh, camper for your trip okay so we've chalked the tires now we've disconnected we're level front to back next thing you're going to want to do is put your stabilizers down and remember one thing folks those are stabilizers they are not levelers okay the ones that you crank down or if you push push a button for the electric ones that they have uh, but cranking them down the ones that crank down you can use yourself a, a power drill if you want just don't get one of those hammer drills three-quarter inch socket and you can zip them down once they touch the ground folks two to three turns and that should be plenty um, something I recommend is giving yourself a better base underneath your stabilizers and for that I'd recommend six by sixes I tell you to get five of them you put one under each stabilizer and one under your tongue jack that way there you don't have to put it down as far and it is a better base now for those of you that have an automatic leveling system not necessarily needed you can get yourself like a 2 by 12 if you wanted to to put up underneath your uh, four or six point leveling system to give you a better base um, as well all right so now we're stabilized we're leveled now we need to hook it up so you can have your electric you're going to have your water you're going to have your sewer then of course your cable or if you're hooking up a portable satellite dish you're going to connect those as well next thing while we're at that area i will discuss with you how to empty your tanks so first of all you're going to be dumping your black tank now once your black tank is dumped what i talk about is connecting a hose if in fact you have a black tank rinse hooking one up and rinsing through your black tank now the best way to rinse through your black tank folks is to and i know it does not it tells you not to do this on the side of your tank so when you do this folks please do stay on task do not get sidetracked but basically you're going to hook that uh, up to your black tank rinse you're going to uh, let it run for a few then close it let it fill up about two-thirds and what you want to do on that folks is walk inside and watch that you stay there right at the uh, where you check your tank levels and you're going to watch when that gets to two-thirds you walk back out and you pull that now if you get one of those clear uh, connection points you'll be able to tell when your black tank is is cleaned out the better you clean out your black tank folks the less odors you're going to have um, and I'll talk about one other thing in, in a few about what you could do to alleviate those type of issues. Um, so that is your black tank. Now you say, well, Paul, what happens if I get off, if I get off task? What happens? At that point, folks, there is a tube that goes from the black tank to the roof. Now, assuming that the seal on your toilet is good, that black tank, when it is full, is going to run up the tube and it's going to just dump it out all over the top of your RV that is what happens that's a pretty uh, it's a mess as they would call it um, so do not do not do that stay on task and you'll be fine so the next thing you could do in order to alleviate odors in your black tank is to put chemical and water about a third of a tank and your chemical back in your tank before you leave the campground what that does for you folks is as you're driving home and as you're driving back to a campground the next week or two that's sloshing around in your tank and it's going to keep it clean next time you go camping you already have the chemical in there and the water's there so you just got to use it um, so that's your black tank after your black tank is done then that is when you'll open your gray tank valve and what that's going to do is that's going to rinse through with your soapy water from your sink and shower that'll rinse through the, the tube and uh, clean that out for you just makes it a little bit nicer more pleasant when you disconnect that and then go put the hose away all right so now we're done with that point of course show you where the water hooks up um, 
on some campers, your water, where you're hooking up, you can fill your fresh water tank uh, there as well as a, they'll have a manual fill area as well. So point that out. Some in that area are going to have a uh, battery disconnect or your outside shower. You know, it'll sh all those types of things in that area. Next, what we're going to do is up in the front of the camper on the off-door side, you're going to have stickers talking about your gross vehicle weight rating, your axle ratings, your tires, and everything else. Right there is going to give you the tire pressure uh, needed for your particular camper. So th that is that. Now, while you're on this side, most people have the camp, you know, your slides on that side. What you can do in order to make sure that you have enough room for your slide to go out instead of having to worry about it, if you will just put your arm up against the camper, stand there, typically from your hand to where your shoulder is, is about the, the depth of that slide out. And as long as nothing is in that area, then you should be fine. So just kind of an easy way for you to check it. Now we're going to walk to the front of the RV. And we're going to talk about most people are going to have dual tanks, whether they're 20 or 30 uh, pound tanks. Uh, and what, what I talk about here, folks, is the automatic switchover. The best way to show you that, and by the way, uh, some of these things I'm going to be talking about, such as the LP, your refrigerator, your water heater, your thermostat, I have how-to videos. You can check those out on my uh, channel as well. Um, and if there's not one for your specific camper, let me know. I'll be more than happy to um, try and do one for you. So here's what I do is you have two LP tanks, and it's going to have an automatic switcher over on it. And that automatic sw switch over section on there does not mean that you need to be moving that lever back and forth for it to automatically switch over. It automatically does, regardless of what tank that thing is pointing at. The way automatic switchover works is when one tank is empty, assuming your other tank is open and has LP in it, it will automatically switch over to that. You will not know the difference if you're running your furnace, uh, your refrigerator, if you're cooking in the oven or whatever. You will not know that that switched over. Now there is going to be a sight glass and there are different sight glasses on there. Uh, they're either going to be uh, clear or green when they're good on the tank that it's pointing to. It'll be red when it is not, when it, that tank is empty. So what I do is I'll typically go in and turn on a furnace or the cooktop and I'll come out and I'll shut the tank off that that thing is pointing to. And what I'm doing is I'm demonstrating that that tank, when it goes empty, that we still have LP going to the cooktop. At that point, I show them by turning that dial to point to the other tank, it's going to go back to being green or clear. At that point, it's going to be drawing from that tank. So this is something you check at the end of your camping trips. If a tank is empty, what you do is after you shut them down, you take that tank off. Do not leave a tank open when you, when you open it because it will be pulling air and it create a problem for you. So make sure the tanks are uh, shut off before you disconnect the tank. So you take that tank off, you'll get it filled, put it back on. Very critical, people. When you uh, go to open your tanks to be used, always open the tank that that lever is pointing to. Because the first tank that you open is the tank that the LP will be drawn from. So you see where that could be an issue? If you continually open the tank that is, it's not pointing to, if that tank runs out and you know, you're checking every time and you're seeing, okay, it's, it's green, it's green, it's good, um, well, that's because it's pulling from this one. Once this tank goes empty, you're out of LP. So if you do it correctly, you will never run out of LP. And you know, there's a lot of folks, they have a hard time using one tank in a particular season. So keep that in mind as well. It's not like they're using a whole heck of a lot, unless you're using your furnace do they use a lot of propane. So that's your LP system. Now we're going to be on the door side, and at this point, whether it's a manual awning or whether it's an electric awning, I will put that awning out and show you how to adjust that awning and the importance of securing that awning uh, so that you have less issues. Folks, I see a lot of people blogging or they put out there, they're asking questions about, oh, geez, I left my awning out, and of course it, it goes straight and I left it out in the rain. Well, you know, so-and-so told me, well, it has these struts on it, and once it fills up with water, it'll dump. Folks, don't believe that. If your awning is going straight out, make sure that you adjust it so that there is a slope. 
Now you could also adjust it so it could slope to the front or the back, but you want that thing at a slope all the way across that on it, and then you want to secure it at that point. If you do that, you can leave the awning out if it's raining because the water's just going to run off it. You know, when I'm out camping, I, the last thing I want to do is put away my awning because now I can't sit outside. Normally it's pretty nice weather, but now I can sit out under the awning and enjoy listening to the pitter patter of the rain on, on the awning and, you know, watching the sights. So that's for your awning. Um, next thing, of course, on your door side, you're going to have outside ter stereo speakers. You're going to have. Um, your outside electric, there'll be an electrical outlet that goes to a GFI on the inside. Typically you'll have a place for the stove. Now that for the stove vent might be on the door side, might be on the off door side, but show you how to open that up and close it. Important that you keep it closed when you're not using it. Um, and then of course I'll show you where the water heater is on the outside and talk to you about whether it's an Atwood or whether it's a Suburban water heater and explain those differences to you. And explain how when you're fill, before you ever turn the electric or anything, whenever, before you ever turn your water heater on, be sure that you turn uh, that you turn on a hot water spigot, and after you hooked up to water, it'll spit and sputter until that water heater is full. Then I explained to you that when you're done camping, to make sure that you run the hot water out of it, make sure you shut it off, run the hot water out of it, and pull the plug. As you, so it, as you drive home, all the water will come out and then put the plug back in. By doing so, folks, you, run, uh, you don't run that risk of having that awful smell from that water sitting in that tank over time. You know what happens to stagnant water. And at this point, I'll show you where the low point drains are and ask you to go ahead and unplug those. And I tell you, just take the, if, if you have plugs, just have them set it in the water heater area and then put them back on again when you get home. The, the key, folks, if you do certain preventative things, you will enjoy camping. You know, th this vlog, my channel is all about helping people create memories that are going to last a lifetime. So now we'd be done on the outside. Uh, and other than showing in, if you had an outside kitchen, outside storage, show you that, that stuff as well, we would go inside. Once inside, what I have you do, folks, is I have... My customers check every cabinet, every drawer, make sure that everything works. So if we're in the kitchen first, we're going to do the kitchen first. So I'll do that kitchen. From there, then what we're going to do is start doing the walkthrough in that particular area. Starting with your monitor panels, with your water heater, with your uh, awning, all that stuff, all your lights and so forth. Checking your levels. The water heater. If you have a gas and electric water heater, whether it's a bourbon, whether it's an Atwood, I tell people, listen, you've already paid the electric for the site, so turn on the electric side. From there, what you're going to do is, if in fact you're going to be taking multiple showers, I tell you to turn on the propane side. What that propane side does for you, folks, is doubles, maybe triples, the amount of hot water that you will have per hour. So let's talk about the Suburban. Suburban water heaters are going to give you, if you're running uh, both... Um, both electric and propane, they're going to give you about 16 gallons of hot water an hour. And folks, it doesn't matter whether you have a, a 6, a 10, or a 12 gallon water heater, it's all the same. On your, and the way that breaks down, it gives you about 6 gallons of hot water on electric, gives you about 10 gallons of hot water on propane, and then of course the two on, that's where it's going to give you a little over 16 gallons of hot water per hour. Now, if you have the Atwood water heater, um, that one is a little bit different if you get larger um, water heaters. But for your standard six gallon water heater, it's about six gallons on electric, 11 gallons on propane, and it's going to give you close to 18 gallons of hot water if you're using both. And you can use both. Now once you're done with the, the last shower, just shut off your propane and just let the electric uh, heat it up. So that is your water heater. Now, folks, you're also going to have, typically in this area, you're going to have a water pump switch. That is only needed if and when you're using the fresh water tank. Um, you don't need the water pump when you are hooked up to a hose. Because when hooked up to a hose, you are um, utilizing the water pressure from that particular uh, campground. So that's that. So now we've, we've gone through that. Now while we're still in the kitchen, at this point, I'm going to go through and show them how to light the oven, how to go ahead and light the stove. And the stove is critical, folks, um, 
people don't realize sometimes it used to be if you have something that's prior to 2005 you can turn that dial 300 and light that the pilot stand back and it, in about a minute it'll finally light and everything will be good to go with the newer campers you have to push and hold the thing in on pilot while you light the pilot then you check that by let go the the knob if the pilot stays on you're good to go turn the knob it's automatically on when you're done cooking if you want to use it the next day you can just turn it back to pilot it's going to stay on and that way you don't have to get on your hands and knees to light it again on your stove top a lot of times they have the strikers so you just turn the striker um, and you got to turn it clockwise you turn it counterclockwise you will break it worst case scenario you break it you're going to use the lighter you use to uh, light the oven not a real big deal um, now at this point what I'll do is I'll talk to them about the LP leak detector LP leak detectors are typically in the kitchen area uh, and they're down low sometimes they're a combination uh, carbon monoxide and LP and you'll be able to sh uh, see what light is on uh, to let you know when it was signaling you whether it was uh, carbon monoxide or LP but what I explained to people is that that LP leak detector is very sensitive so if you are spraying any aerosol it could set it off so just be cognitive of what's going on if in fact it does go off if you have a dog depending on the size of the dog if your dog is laying and this is this is kind of important too again this is one of those things where you have to be aware of what's going on if your dog is laying next to that LP leak detector and accidentally lets one loose or maybe on purpose that will or could set off the LP leak detector but I can assure you folks you will know the difference now let's say that in the at any time that that LP leak detector goes off and uh, whether you, let's say it's in the middle of the night what I recommend you do is when you get up is open a door because LP is heavier than air and that'll let the LP go out now what you're going to want to do is check your burners and see if somebody maybe left one of the dials on if somebody left one of the dials on you're good that's what caused it to shut it off you can mute the LP leak detector and you know let things air out you'll be good to go if in fact you do smell LP but those dials were not left on at that point what folks you need to do is go out and shut off your LP bottles you're going to need to get somebody in to do an LP leak tech do not take your little lighter and go around and try to find a leak that's not a good idea so that's on the LP side next we're going to talk about the refrigerator now with refrigerators you know you could have a three-way refrigerator you could have a two-way refrigerator um, or you could have just an electric refrigerator so let's talk about the electric refrigerator first some people have these 110 refrigerators in their campers now and I'm not talking about the ones that are out in your outside kitchen okay those do not work the same as what I'm going to be talking about here so the ones that that you have in your uh, fifth wheel or in your travel trailer with uh, a, a residential refrigerator those will be running off of 110 when you're plugged in but then there's an inverter to have them run under off the battery while you're not plugged in uh, typically when that's the case you'll have two batteries now with that being said that as you tow down the road your vehicle is is charging your battery so you'll be fine but those type of refrigerators will only give you somewhere between eight to ten hours if in fact you decide to boondock so keep that in mind if that is something you plan on doing you're going to want to have to have a generator or some other means of keeping your food cold now let's talk about the two-way refrigerator meaning um, we're talking LP and 110 those have an automatic switch over and what I do is I explain to people how that works I tell people always leave it in auto that way there um, it will automatically switch from propane to 110 if you plug in or vice versa now one of the biggest things that I point out when I come in a camper is before you would turn on any propane appliance whether it be your furnace whether it be your refrigerator uh, or even if it was your um, your oven I would tell you to light the three burners on top of your stove and what that does that bleeds your LP line and makes it easier you will have run a less risk of having misfires with your appliances um, so 
when you're getting ready to go camping, you're plugged in at your house on Wednesday, turn your refrigerator on, go ahead and check your water systems. Thursday, you're going to put things in your refrigerator. Friday, when you go to disconnect, before you disconnect, you go in and make sure your propane bottles are on. And remember, which one do you turn on first? The one that the lever is pointing to. Turn those on. Go in, light the burners on your cooktop, shut them off, go out, unplug, put the cord away. At that point, you come back in, check your refrigerator, and it should have switched over, and you should be fine. If the check light is blinking or if there's something that's lit differently on your, uh, on your refrigerator, and they should be able to point that out to you, at that point, you'd want to shut it off, turn it back on, and, and wait a few moments. And you should hear a little click, and then you should be good to go, and you can hit the road. Now, keep in mind, if you're going down the road and you have it on propane, folks, you want to, if you got to stop and get gas or fuel, make sure that you shut that refrigerator off before you pull up to the, the pumps. Fuel vapors and an open flame, they do not mix very well. So just keep that in mind. If, in fact, that you have a three-way refrigerator, you're able to cool your refrigerator down on propane or 110. The battery function is specifically for maintaining so as you're going down the road. You know, so if you have a three-way refrigerator, by all means, turn it on battery as you're going down the road. The beautiful thing about that, if, in fact, you are going to be looking at going through any tunnels, um, you are not going to have to worry about shutting off your propane because it's already going to be off. So those are the refrigerators. Next thing I'll explain to people, of course, is where your uh, breakers, uh, breakers and fuse panel is and explain that to you. They should all be marked for you. Then we'll be looking at your thermostat and explain how that works. And folks, I have a couple different uh, videos on how they work. The biggest thing that I point out on that, people, is if in fact that you turn the AC on or when you turn the AC on is put the fan in the auto I'm, I'm sorry take the fan out of the auto mode and put it on high or low and the reason for that is when the AC compressor goes off that you're not um, losing uh, the cooling for your uh, camper because what happens is the compressor goes off and your fan is in the on position it'll still circulate air and it'll keep you cooler then, of course, I'm going to go through, show you the shower, how the shower works with the button on and off, your toilet, explain to you how to prime the, prime the toilet, putting your chemical in there, fill in the bowl, dump it, fill the bowl, put chemical in, dump it, fill it a third or fourth time, and then you're, that's what we call priming your black tank. So that is basically how we do it. After all that, then, of course, we do a hit show through, show you how that works, and then a test tow. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully there's been some helpful tips. If you have any questions or something you would like me to cover, please do uh, shoot me a comment. I appreciate you watching, and we'll be back at you again next week. Take care.